On today's episode, e-fuels by Siemens Energy and Porsche, establishing standards for internet device connectivity, and where are the manufacturing jobs in the US? Coming up on This Week in Engineering. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, the world's trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other videos for the working engineer on engineering.com slash TV today. Siemens Energy and Porsche have announced a pilot project to create a technology that may let the internal combustion engine compete with EVs in the zero carbon emissions transportation market. It's all about e-fuels. The project is based in Chile and includes Chilean petroleum company ENAP, energy firm AME, and Italy's Inel. The ambitious pilot project takes advantage of windy conditions in southern Chile to produce climate-neutral green wind power, which drives a proton exchange membrane electrolyzer to produce hydrogen. CO2 extracted from the atmosphere is reacted with the hydrogen to produce synthetic methanol, which is then converted to gasoline using methanol to gasoline technology licensed from ExxonMobil. The goal is industrial scale production and the pilot plant will generate approximately 30,000 liters of e-fuel as early as 2022. The plan then is to scale production in two phases to reach production capacities of 55 million liters of the fuels by 2024 and 550 million liters by 2026. The primary customer for the green fuel will be Porsche. Now, Enel and AME had previously announced a large project in Chile to produce green hydrogen from wind power, and ENAP will support the project by providing operating staff and with maintenance and logistics. As part of Germany's national hydrogen strategy, an 8 million euro grant for the project was awarded to Siemens Energy from the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. While the pilot project is based in southern Chile, the basic chemical inputs are available worldwide. The Patagonia base is an excellent source of low-cost wind energy, but the technology should work anywhere that clean, low-cost electricity can be sourced. Could solar and even nuclear be used to create carbon neutral motor fuels? Well, there's no technical reason why not. And if the project can show economies of scale, this technology may keep internal combustion engines relevant for Porsche's high performance customer base and for plug-in hybrid owners, especially in Europe, who may face urban area exclusions and high carbon taxes. We'll be watching this technology with great interest. The California-based Zigbee Alliance brings engineers from all around the world for cooperative endeavors. Now, they've introduced Project CHIP, Connected Home Over Internet Protocol, in 2019. Now, it's an initiative to create a unifying connectivity standard for the smart home industry. After meeting with the technology associated with devices such as Amazon Alexa or Google Home, the project is expanding to include lighting, electrical, HVAC, safety, security, and other technologies used in commercial buildings. It's seeking engineers to join the commercial strategy group to create a specification that meets the needs of all stakeholders. Facility managers, for example, must deal with a multi-vendor, multi-standard environment that features tens of thousands of individual devices all trying to communicate with each other. But CHIP's goal is to help the building automation industry flourish through a common standard that makes it easier to integrate devices from multiple vendors into one system. The ultimate aim is a building automation system for a commercial facility that includes equipment from multiple vendors. Plays well with others, can be easily replaced, and is scalable. Now, it should integrate into wired and wireless systems alike with remote wireless devices powered by maintenance-free energy harvesting technology rather than batteries that need to be replaced. It must also provide all the necessary security and comply with regulatory codes and standards. Affected buildings could include schools, hospitals, banks, hotels, restaurants, airports, data centers, manufacturing plants, and many more. The project is seeking diverse representation of stakeholders and experts at all levels, engineers to hands-on installers, technicians, and high-level system administrators. Project CHIP is being built on a market-tested set of components with a spec that remains vendor agnostic by virtue of its industry standard IP backbone. This keeps the physical details of communication at the data abstraction level. The spec will be a living document that starts by addressing common use cases and devices, gradually expanding and being refined as more applications are added and new products are developed. The goal is to create an open source standard combining best-in-class systems that encompass commissioning, security, and messaging proven to work at multiple scales. We have a link in the description below if you're interested in expressing your interest in joining the commercial strategy team. While the general trend in U.S. manufacturing employment has been significant decline over the last 20 years, researchers at California-based Smartest Dollar are reporting that as a result of steadily increasing values of U.S. goods and services, while there's been concentrated growth in manufacturing jobs in medium and smaller cities. The research report cites data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which shows that manufacturing accounted for 13% or 17.3 million non-farm labor jobs back in 1999. But by 2019, this had dwindled to only 8.5%, which is less than 13 million manufacturing jobs. However, while most manufacturing work is now outsourced to overseas, the value of goods and services produced in the U.S. has steadily grown. 
the index of manufacturing labor productivity is now 2.5 times higher than the earliest index data produced back in 1987. Now, this is primarily attributed to technological advancement in machinery, increased worker skills, as well as optimized industrial operations. According to Smart's Dollar, the Grand Rapids metro area in Michigan will have over twice the national average of manufacturing jobs. It's the number one metro area with the greatest proportion of manufacturing employment at 21%. It also had the least loss in total manufacturing jobs between 1999 and 2019, from 130,000 jobs down to 119,000. Other cities with strong levels of manufacturing work include San Jose, Milwaukee, Dearborn, Louisville, Portland, Rochester, Hartford, Minneapolis, Buffalo, Charlotte, and Seattle. Smartest Dollar expects the economic slowdown caused by COVID-19 will hurt the manufacturing sector. However, it's likely to recover more rapidly compared to hospitality, travel, and the tourism sectors. That's it for this week's show, brought to you by engineering.com TV. Thanks for watching.